Longtime editor of Philadelphia's diocesan newspaper, the Catholic Standard and Times, he was forever a favorite son of the Catholic press. And he was a great supporter of the Catholic press and those who worked in it. He attended virtually every Catholic media conference put on by the CPA during his Roman exile. The last one, several months before he died, was the centenary celebration of the Catholic Press Association in Pittsburgh in 2011. He regaled listeners with several funny stories from his career, but then he grew serious. He concluded his remarks with these words. God has been very good to me in communications. I'm very proud to come from Philadelphia. I'm very proud to have started my communications life in Philadelphia. But while my work has been almost exclusively religious, I think you should also consider your work not necessarily religious, but as sacred. You all have a special bond with the people to whom you communicate. You owe them respect. You should treat them with dignity. You should challenge them to goodness. You have a great opportunity to influence the lives of others. They look up to you. They look to you for information, for formation, for inspiration. Please never fail to give them these types of encouragement, this sacred bond which should exist between you and your listeners and your viewers. May you continue to bring people to truth and to love in a society which needs both. <clears throat> This final sentence, if anything, is more true today than even just six years ago. But I'd like to talk tonight about what he called these types of encouragement, these privileged tasks of all who are in to the Pontifical Council for Social Communications, led by then Archbishop Foley, issued Etatis Novi, a document also called on social communications on the 20th anniversary of Comunio et Progressio. It states, the power of media extends to defining not only what people will think, but even what they will think about. Reality, for man, is what the media recognize as real. What media do not acknowledge seems of little importance. It goes on to urge that Christians, quote, find ways to furnish the missing information to those deprived of it, and also to give a voice to engage the great issues of the day, their voices often barely rise above a whisper in the secular press. And just as unfortunately, most Catholics are like non-Catholics. That is, they get their information about the church from the secular To tell the stories that are not being told, or not being told well, and it needs a voice to mobilize. Catholic media that can mobilize Catholics, getting the word out on events of importance, whether the 40 days of life or last December's day of prayer for migrants and refugees. This kind of mobilization necessarily involves social media for specific events, but it is traditional news reporting, backgrounders, and analyses that educate and arouse the interests of Catholics and explain what is important about an event, an issue, or a public policy. The question is, what is it teaching? All media is formative. The question is, how are we being formed? It is my belief that the Catholic press in particular, and Catholic media in general, remain the primary means of adult faith formation in this country. While much ink has been spilled and many trees have died for documents asserting the importance of adult faith formation, the truth is that most parishes have neither the funds nor the bandwidth to provide much in the way of such formation on any the sort of media regular. rarely present the faith in a systematic way, it is very much a presentation <coughs> rooted in the real world. It shows the faith alive and relevant in our society today. Catholic media not only can present the faith as a living reality impacting the world, but it can also be responsive to the needs of its audience in a way that is both the nature of our profession and profoundly pastoral. The immediacy of Twitter, or Facebook, and other channels allows Catholic media to meet these needs and answer these questions quickly. What Francis is challenging us to do to heed the cries of the poor, to walk with the powerless, to speak for the voiceless, can in fact be done, is being done. And that even when the church asks of us things that the world says are impossible, to make sacrifices that the world has no interest in making, it can be done, it is being done. And the lesson is 
that we can do it. The task of the Catholic press to challenge our readers to goodness. The great insight of the lay movements of the 20th century and affirmed by the Second Vatican Council is that we are all called to be saints. Holiness isn't just a job for father or for sister. This is our job. In his 2017 message for the World Day of Communications, Pope Francis emphasized the notion of inspiration as part of the role, well, it's role to inform, to form, and to inspire, <clears throat> particularly at this time when other institutions of the church, especially the parish, are facing equally daunting challenges and are in need of a well-formed laity. <laughs> Echoing an appeal made in Aitatis Novi, I would also hope that the leaders of the church will pay attention to the professional and spiritual development of those whose vocation it is to be journalists, editors, writers, designers, photographers, and, and videographers. Cardinal Foley would today make the same point that his document, Aitatis Novi, made 25 years ago next month. The church must continue, it said, in spite of the many difficulties involved, to develop, maintain, and foster its own specifically Catholic instruments and programs for social communications. Catholic media work is not simply one more program alongside all the rest of church activities, it added. Social communications have a role to play in every aspect of the church's mission. In, in Catholic media as elsewhere, there are people who are, who are polarizing influences in that. Um, I, I mean, I can say what, what, what my attitude was at Emerson and Visitor and at Catholic News Service, which is we see where the church is positioned and we, we hew to that position, which is, I think, a, a balanced look that, that addresses, for example, both the social justice issues and pro-life issues or whatever <coughs> extremes that you want to do. I think, I think we need to have fair and, 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 and certainly fair and balanced coverage, but we always have to be looking at what is the church teaching, where does the church stand uh, in this area. Well, here's my concern. I believe everything you said, everything you said, it was a wonderful presentation. But I'm the bishop who closed down the county standard of time here in Philadelphia. <laughs> you know, I, uh, we don't have a Catholic radio station in our diocese. We have a lot of good people who are working alongside us who are produced, uh, who've come up with Catholic radio and are supporting it through extraordinary efforts. Um, but how do we pay for, for it? I mean, that's the real issue. I mean, what do I have to close and what should I close in order to open uh, the things that you're talking about? Because, you know, the, the media is sufficient. I know there's a big question. don't want these kind of decisions. <laughs> um, I mean, that, that is in some ways the Achilles heel of my argument, and yet also it underscores the, the problem. We, what we've been doing is, is that we, slowly over the last 30 or so years, we've been starving the, the Catholic press. If you look at, at what the Catholic press was, um, where a person could make a career, a profession, they could support a family, um, there was people who to move from diocese to archdiocese and promote up the ladder. Uh, it, it really was some place where there was a lot of resources invested. And Catholics saw it as part of their responsibility. It was kind of, came with the membership. They, they read and supported their Catholic paper. And I grew up in Los Angeles. We have the Tidings Drive that every week or we said it's getting weaker. We're going to cut back on our investment. And, and it, it shrank and shrank. Now, Philadelphia was, I mean, this was, Without going into all the details, I realize this was a unique situation. You had an amazing financial obstacle, to, and, and you had to make some really hard choices. But I still think that this kind of adult faith formation tool, right now, we don't have any other means. We're, we're stuck with parish education, parish based education. Um, we have the same problem there. How do we pay catechists? enough to make it a, a career. There's one sacramental imagination so that it all means something. In other words, if you don't, I, I'm going to vulgarize the issue here, but I mean, that if, if you don't really believe there's a heaven and hell and you can't possibly go there, what you're, what you're left with is just sort of a humanitarian yeah. crisis here, Lord and Savior. It's not an invalid question. It doesn't tend to be how we frame things. But do we, do we have that relationship? 
Um, does the zeal for your house consume me? Uh, and 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 I think that that I mean this is a great friend and I have, have talked about this the, the, the sacred imagination. How how do we communicate that? I think that's um, I don't know, but your next next speaker should really address that. <laughs>